I first got involved with whales and dolphins in 1973 as a filmmaker and a budding environmental journalist, really trying to see whether we could film and photograph and record killer whales off Vancouver Island, west coast of Canada. And uh, we found that, that we could, and a small group of us uh, just happened to be there when the scientists started studying the whales. and. We joined up together and really were able to start learning amazing things about them. And that led to 10 summers with killer whales. And from there, I, I started getting interested in all whales and dolphins and traveling around and doing research. And I wrote this Encyclopedia of Whales, Dolphins, and Porpoises because I really wanted to bring the reader out the wild with whales and me and to try to focus on some of the really exciting things. This has been the revolution in research the last 30 or 40 years. And I have so many stories, it's really hard to narrow them down. And I've tried to put quite a few of them into the book. One of our interesting stories is about Iceberg, the all-white male killer whale that we found first in 2010 off of uh, Russia with a, a Russian research group that I work with. And we were able to um, photograph him and, and do a short video. And it's really remarkable because you had all these black and white, the usual killer whales traveling along. And all of a sudden this big male, pure white, comes out of the water. And you know, you just wonder how he managed to survive. I mean, the uh, albinos in other species don't necessarily do very well. And, uh, you know, there he was, and we knew from the tall dorsal fin that he was at least 15 years old. Well, since then, we've seen him again um, uh, several years, uh, well, a couple years ago. So we know that he's still alive. He's with his family of about 10 to 12 fish-eating killer whales and, and is out there kind of like a spirit or a ghost uh, traveling. Whales. You know, a lot of people think that whales are saved. We really have a long way to go. I think we, we figured out that if we worked really hard, we could stop the whaling. And I think, you know, commercial whaling is, is dead, but there are still some countries that are doing a bit of whaling um, uh, for what they call scientific purposes. And there are quite a few people who think that there are more serious considerations for whales in terms of their health in the environment. I mean, the, the main one is bycatch. They get caught in nets and in fishing gear, and that may be killing 300,000 per year. And there are also whales regularly getting hit by ships, uh, sometimes even cruise ships. And really what we need to do is we need to create homes for whales. We need habitats in the sea that are protected. And that's really going to be the key as to whether we have a future for whales and dolphins and porpoises in the ocean. I'm really against uh, whales and dolphins being put in aquariums. Everything that we're learning about them and how intelligent they are, how social they are, uh, everything tells us they do not belong in aquariums and I think that you know the wider public is starting to realize that more and more as well and I think the average person looking at the encyclopedia of whales dolphins and porpoises gets an insight into this really remarkable research that's gone on uh, for the for the last few years and also um, sees how they can help and and there is a, a tremendous amount that the average person can do to help to save whales and also to appreciate whales and learn more about the ocean. And it, it's really a case of not just protecting whales, dolphins, and porpoises, but by protecting them, we really create a place that's safe for ourselves and for all other species.